solid, solid weekend. Great, great Sunday in sports. Cowboys got a big win against the Jaguars. Mm -hmm. Big Ben got the Steelers back on track. But why not start with the most anticipated matchup of the weekend, Chiefs and Patriots. Let's dive right in and get right to it. Patrick Mahomes taking on Tom Brady. Future GOAT, perhaps, versus current GOAT, for sure. Chiefs down 15 at the half, but take a three-point lead in the fourth. Brady, the legs, rushing touchdown. Pats take the lead just over three minutes to go. Chiefs down seven now. Mahomes finds Tyreek Hill for the 75-yard touchdown. Third TD connection of the night, but Brady is really good at football. Finds his favorite target. That's Rob Gronkowski. Gets the ball inside the 10. Sets up, the, that was, by the way, Gronk's 500th career reception. Sets up the game-winning field goal. Pat win this one 43 to 40 here is tom brady after the game when he was running tyreek was running the score i said good you know score quick because then we had you know enough time they had one time out left and gave us a little time to, to go down and kick the field goal just to be able to go against the best i mean you you want to compete against them every single day and we got down put ourselves in a huge hole and I, i'm just proud of my team on how we fought to get back in the game and uh we had the lead at one point and we ended up not coming out with the win but just that fight i mean it's something you can carry on and to the rest of this season i don't think this is an intimidating place at all i think it's just uh the excitement of it being sunday night against a great team i think he got excited i don't think it's intimidating for him at all i think he uh he rises to them for the moment uh, uh, when it when it's presented and sure enough, um, uh, I think I think he handled himself great. You know, there was a lot of good fillers on the field tonight. I mean, the two good teams and they compete both competed very hard. Came down to the final play of the game. Uh, there's a lot of good football players out there on both sides of the ball. If offense is what you wanted, offense is what you got yesterday. It was a great shootout. We saw two very, very high-powered offensive teams going up against each other. CC, what was the key to the Patriots in their win over the Chiefs? Well, it's fairly easy. The beginning of the game, the Kansas City not being able to get seven points touchdowns compared to selling for field goals. We knew that was going to be important going into the game. I knew New England's game plan was going to be Tony Michelle and run the football, short passing attack to try to be able to grind it out. And when you look at time of possession, Bill Belichick and this organization, they knew they couldn't stop Kansas City. So what they do, they, they ate up time possession. And you look at the big disparity, time possession, number of plays, running plays, like there's no way Kansas City's going to be able to win that type of football game. They were almost able to win it, though, because they are that talented. Patty Mahomes did come back from a, from a shaky start, very, very impressed. And I think Kansas City... When Pat Mahomes ran across the field to shake hands with Tom Brady, it wasn't as if this young guy had lost this game and been out of class. It was as Kansas City and Patty Mahomes ran out of time. Yeah. And that was the only thing. That was some of the big takeaways from last night. Um, it was an extraordinary football game. It was a brilliant example of what Coach Mangini talks about all the time, and he'll be out here later, of the Patriots taking what the other team gives them. The Chiefs were staying in nickel coverage or an extra defensive back almost the entire game because they were afraid of Gronk. And up until the very end of the game, they seemed to neutralize Gronk pretty well until he made the two biggest plays of the game for the Pats. And so New England said, fine, you're going to have small people out there. We will dedicate ourselves to running the football. They ran ball 38 times for 173 yards. Like, that was, they saw what the Chiefs were going to let them do, and they took full advantage of it. They weren't trying to prove any point. They weren't trying to do anything tricky. No, we'll just run it straight at you. Had the added benefit of keeping the Chiefs' offense off the field. And then you have a game where, I mean, it's very hard to beat a team that doesn't commit a penalty and doesn't punt. The Pats became the first team in the Super Bowl era to not have an accepted penalty against and to not punt the ball. So the fact that the Chiefs were even tied in this game is a little remarkable. It's because that offense is so deadly. And if the Chiefs defense gets a little healthier, whether that's Eric Berry coming back, which he might, Justin Houston coming back, which he will, then they'd have a much better chance in a rematch of this game. But they dug themselves a huge hole. You mentioned it. It wasn't just settling for field goals early, but right before the half, Patrick Mahomes made a terrible mistake. He threw, a, he threw the passes he's been making all year long into those tight windows across his body, got tips up, tipped up in the air in the end zone, and that's at least three points off the board, maybe seven, like that plus the other Mahomes interception early. Those proved deadly for the Chiefs. What does it say about Patrick Mahomes that he went into this game knowing that he was going up against arguably one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, found himself down big time at the half, 
came back and was able to gain his composure and mount the comeback like he did. And you said it. If this game came down to whoever had the ball last was most likely going to win this game, but put his team in a position to win. says a lot about who he is as a young quarterback. It really does. It, most people, as, as Travis Kelsey said, you know, New England playing there in Gillette, it's not intimidating. Well, and Tom Brady's there. Belichick's there. The fans are used to winning. You know, they're very, very smart football fans. It can be intimidating. It has been, especially the quarterbacks, 25 and under. They have a remarkable record um, there in Gillette. So to see that he has the the insides, it's not it's not something you can put your hand on. It's not a test at the combine. Because if it was a test at the combine, organizations would spend millions of dollars. It's that once you see them in prime time, in these big games, the game was not too big for him. Even though he made some mistakes, all quarterbacks make some mistakes. Tom Brady made some mistakes, fumbling the ball in the pocket to allow the Chiefs to be able to get back in the game. But anyone who is a Chiefs fan after watching last night, no, you're, you're looking to the future, and this is as bright as your future has been since the 60s when the Chiefs, when they won some world championships then. There's no question. It's the first time they've had a franchise quarterback since the 60s. I mean, since Lynn Dawson. You joked about me bringing him up a few weeks ago, but that's the truth. And I, I said Friday that if the Chiefs win this game and Pat Mahomes plays great, it could be a game we look back to as a passing of the torch type of game. Now, Brady made it very clear he and the Pats are not ready to give that up, but I'm as confident this morning as I've ever been that the next great quarterback in this conference is number 15 for the Kansas City Chiefs. He, there is, to me, there is, I am no longer entertaining the possibility that he's a one-year wonder, a flash in the pan, that it, this isn't sustainable. Now, as the, if he doesn't have these types of weapons, are they going to be the highest scoring team? Things like that can change. But this guy has all of the tools that make you a great player. And now we've seen, whether it's on the road at mile high, down double digits in a successful comeback, or on the road at Gillette, down double digits in a game he got back tied. If you remember last year, the Chiefs were down three at halftime against the Pats. They came back and won. And we talked about how it was the first time in a hundred some games that Pats had blown a halftime lead at home against an AFC opponent. All these things. They hadn't blown a double digit halftime lead at home in almost the entirety of the Brady Belichick era. The Chiefs were right there. They couldn't get a stop at the end. If there was one thing you could point to why the Chiefs couldn't do it, maybe it was their defense. What's the one thing you took away from both these teams, from the Patriots and from the Chiefs? If, if Kansas City has one pass rusher, they win that game. They, they, they win that game last night. And if Eric Berry can get back and be healthy, man, this, to me, Kansas City is still the best team in the AFC. So well, that's an, that surprised me to hear you say that. Because you think this, the Chiefs, it's more about who wasn't there for them defensively than what they can't do. New England can't play better. No, no accepted penalties, right? One turnover. All the things going to big lead, playing at home. You know, Kansas City still has a one-game lead. Man, Kansas City, to me, I believe is going to be 14-2. and two. That's what I believe the regular season record is going to be. Will New England be able to run the rest of the table? I don't think so. So I still, still believe Kansas City is going to get home field advantage. It is a miss from the home field advantage side. It's a missed opportunity because while Kansas City still has a lead, they have essentially a half-game lead now. Had they won the game, it would have been a three-and-a-half game lead. They kind of would have put the Pats to bed as far as the Pats having a better record than them. As far as the game goes, they sh it should be noted as far as the Chiefs' defensive injuries. They didn't have, the, their two starting safeties were guys that weren't on the roster to start the season. They had three safeties injured, inactive. They had two outside linebackers injured, inactive. D Ford was the only player in their front seven that I think is a plus player. Justin Houston will be back. Eric Berry's a question mark about he's still dealing with that Achilles injury he suffered against the Patriots last year. This was, the, I, I don't want to say it was a missed opportunity for Kansas City, but this was an opportunity to put the Patriots away as far as who's going to, if they they have a rematch where the game will be played now the game could be played in Gillette but if it is I think the Chiefs know we can win here we can go here and win in this stadium a lot of teams don't know that Patriots come away with the win five lead changes 71 passing attempts and a big offensive game for both teams coming up though we're gonna talk some Cowboys how did their offense explode against one of the best defensive teams in the league that's next on first things first